Hi, I'm Jen Tripp, Executive Director of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. One of the benefits to joining the Chamber is networking, not only with other business owners, but also town officials. The Chamber recently hosted the State of the Town event at Town Hall, which featured Town Manager Adam Chapdelaine and Economic Development Coordinator Ted Fields. They presented an update on the town's financial status and what the town is doing to promote and support Arlington businesses. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Adam Chapdelaine. I'm the town manager. Uh, I've been town manager for about two years, and I was the deputy town manager for about two years before that. So I've been in Arlington for just about, uh, I think it's almost four years today, uh, this week. So very happy to be here. Very happy to see you all here today. Uh, it's kind of exciting that I think I've met four or five new people today. Um, I didn't necessarily expect that coming here this morning, so I'm very glad to see a lot of new faces. So I've got a couple of handouts that I'll uh, pass around. We can start here. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the town's finances, as well as some of uh, some of the other things that are happening in town. And Bob Bowes put the added pressure on me to tell him something he hasn't heard before today. <laughs> so no 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 canned speech uh, available. So th there's two documents I'm passing out: uh, the spreadsheet document, the single page you see. This is the town's long-range projection, and I'll quickly walk through that so you can get an understanding of what our current long-range financial projections are, as well as how we plan for the town's finances. Uh, and I've also passed out uh, a bifold document called the Public Annual Financial Report. This is the third year we've issued this report. Uh, the first year we mailed it out in tax bills uh, to every resident, uh, then with some changes in uh, the post office, we can no longer put them in the envelope for the same price, so we've now included them in uh, the townwide distribution of the advocate for all residents to see. So it's kind of a quick snapshot uh, of how the town operates, some financial happenings in the town, as well as some comparative metrics, how we compare in terms of spending and other financial measures uh, to some of our comparable communities. So I thought that might be helpful for you all to take a look at. Uh, in terms of finances, if we can. Uh, Take a look at the, the spreadsheet document that I passed out. One thing you hear in town, or you may have heard in town, spoken about a lot, is the fact that the town faces a structural deficit. We're five and a half square miles. We're pretty much built out. There isn't really any room for new construction or large scale new construction of growth. And under the constraints of Proposition Two and a Half, which is how cities and towns are able to grow their tax revenue on a year over year basis in Massachusetts, one of the major ways that some cities and towns can balance their budget year over year is by year. Uh, so some communities that have more land, you know, they, we get about, let's say, $500,000 a year in new growth on a total tax levy of about $100 million. Uh, by comparison, uh, I like to use this comparison, the town of Northboro, they've got a total tax levy of about $40 million, and they have $500 million. So from a percentage basis, you can see that there's some challenges in how much revenue we can grow based on our financial constraints. So based upon that, what happens is our costs, generally our fixed costs, insurance for employees, retirement costs for employees, utilities, grow faster than the amount of revenue we can raise. And historically, the way Arlington has handled that is ask for periodic overrides of Proposition 2.5. And what the plan has done, or the plans that have been put forth in the past, and this plan that we're currently in has done, is ask for an increase in taxes, put aside money year over year until the structural deficit sort of reared its head again, and then withdrew from that money that was put aside to balance the budget. And to make sure that the money lasts as long as we expect it to when the town asks for the property tax override, we put from some very strict uh, spending caps in place on areas of the budget where we have control. So I, I won't go line by line over this, but some quick, some quick points to make. Uh, the top of this sheet is a five-year projection of revenue estimates in the town. Uh, we collect state aid. Uh, the state gives us funding for both uh, through a program called Chapter 70 for education, as well as unrestricted general government aid. And I know we have our uh, delegation, uh, Representative Dave Rogers and Sean Garbley here, who have
fought very hard for us to get increases in state aid, especially in, the, in recent years. Uh, we get reimbursements for school construction projects, local receipts, monies we receive uh, for different permits and fees and rentals we charge in town. Uh, and then you can see the big amount is property tax. We're really primarily dependent on property tax here in Arlington. And then going down to expenses, uh, you see we break it up by education, town budgets, capital budgets, pensions, insurance, and then some smaller accounts. And the controls we've put in place are uh, no town budget. Uh, the town budget as a whole uh, for town departments can't go up more than 3.5% a year. So that caps our spending and we make sure we control our costs there. Education, we've capped at 3.5% for general education and 7% for special education. Uh, and this year, though, for the first time, uh, we've incorporated an inflator for enrollment growth, as the, some of you may have read, the schools are seeing unexpected uh, enrollment growth that wasn't incorporated into this original plan. So uh, what you see, if you look across the bottom of the sheet, you see a balanced budget through FY18. Uh, and what you also see, if you look uh, down the reserve balance, is an override stabilization fund line. And that's where that money I mentioned that's raised through the override is deposited. But then when you get into FY19, you can see that we've spent all of that override stabilization fund money and that we are projecting today a deficit in FY19 of about $300,000. And then if you roll forward to FY20, a deficit much larger of $12 million. So what we do on a year-in, year-out basis is really try to squeeze the budgets as tight as we can, even hopefully under or within uh, those caps that I mentioned earlier to try to push that cliff out as far as we can before the town would then again consider asking voters for a property tax override. So I guess in, uh, one of the things Jen asked me to talk about was the town's financial stability. So today, we're quite financially stable. The Proposition 2.5 override of 2011 put the town in a very good financial position, moving town employees into the state's group insurance commission, the GIC, even further how good that position was for the town. And that's what creates all of those balanced numbers for FY14 for FY18. And we were also balanced in uh, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, but long term, we have that structural deficit that we face. Uh, so that's sort of the bigger challenge that uh, no matter how frugal we are, there's still that challenge we need to face in the future. And there's one final point on the finances. If you go to the last page of the glossy document, uh, it uh, just kind of shows you how, uh, how we measure up to other communities uh, and, and why some of the factors I mentioned uh, do impact us as they do. If you look at our average single family tax bill amongst these uh, 12 communities that we compare ourselves to, uh, we're, we're somewhat middle of the road, a little bit more than middle of the road. If you look at our average new growth, uh, that amount of new tax revenue growth that I mentioned, you can see we're well below the statewide average of 1.59%, and we're also near the bottom uh, of our comparable community. So I think that points out uh, the challenges we have with new revenue growth. And if you look at our total per capita spending uh, in FY12, uh, you can again see we're near the bottom at $2,200, well below the statewide average, and near the bottom of our comparables. Uh, so I, I think this is a pretty compelling uh, data set that shows that we don't have necessarily a spending problem. Uh, but a revenue problem. Uh, in terms of some other things happening in town, uh, one of the main focuses I've had over the past year, really with an eye on trying to contain our town costs, is the development of a strategic plan for information technology, working with our IT department and then all of our departments. Uh, we formulated a three-year plan for IT, which is really focused on how do we improve our own internal customer service-based IT department, working with our departments, but then how do we use technology to better deliver services to residents and businesses? Uh, the first thing in that plan that's called for is a needs assessment of every department, and we're just wrapping that up now, and we've got a pretty robust list uh, of things that departments want to do, a lot of them customer-facing that can really improve uh, the town uh, resident slash business interface. So that's one major thing we're working on. Uh, a lot of you know, and I'm sure a lot of you attended, some of the recent public discussions that we had in regards to parking in Arlington Center. Uh, the town hired Nelson Nygaard, uh, a nationally renowned parking firm, to come in uh, and do a study. Uh, they did a number of public meetings, a public survey. Most recently, they presented their final recommendations or their draft final recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. 
and we're now going to be working internally to make some official recommendations for the board to adopt. Uh, as for those of you who have seen it, if you haven't seen it, the study is available on the town's website. Uh, there's some significant changes proposed for Arlington Center in terms of parking strategy, uh, which include paid parking on the street, uh, new paid parking machines uh, in the lots, uh, as well as some changes to hourly limits both on the street and in the lot. So happy to discuss that further if anybody would like to. Uh, we also have been working on a new website for the town. Uh, that's something that should be getting rolled out in the next few months. Uh, so we're excited about that and increasing uh, you know, another step forward in how we communicate with the public. I think we have a very robust and information-filled website now, uh, but I think we decided about a year ago it was time to move to the next generation of uh, a web interface, so we've been working on that. Um, and finally, uh, another thing that works into the finances that we recently completed uh, was a salary study of all town employees comparing uh, town employee compensation to the actually the 12 communities that we also include on this public annual financial document. Uh, so that's been finalized working with uh, all the employee unions. We've come to sort of a common set of data that will help inform us as we uh, bargain collectively in the future. So that's uh, sort of the current state of the town and some of the things we're working on. I don't know, do you want me to answer questions before today? Do you have any questions now? Or? Sure. Let's do questions now, Bob. <laughs> so, Adam, yeah, you talk about the uh, situation where revenue is very high and, and spending is very lean. Uh, we're, very all, we're all very interested in the change about parking changes coming up. This will cost more. How do you pay for that? So, what I think most communities that have done that have gone from zero to something, like we were talking about doing, is they, they uh, establish a relationship with a vendor where there's some kind of revenue sharing where they will either help you buy down or maybe absorb all the capital costs of the installation of parking technology for a cut of the revenue. That's the fastest way to get it done. The next fastest way to get it done would be for us to get some kind of appropriation from town meeting to either lease or purchase new equipment. Uh, so a lot of it becomes how fast we want to act. I personally want to act pretty fast. Uh, I think there's some board members who, uh, board of selecting members who want to act very quickly, but that's still a discussion to be had. So there, there are some options to, you know, public-private partnership. And how about road changes like uh, signage and bus stop moving and fire hydrants and things like that? So signage, um, signage shouldn't be a big expense, and I think that's something that if we plan properly, we could do fairly expeditiously. Bus stop moving is a little challenging working with the MBTA. I think there'd be a little bit of a process ahead of us convincing them and getting them on board of what changes we'd want to make. Um, I'm sorry, the last one was that. Uh, talking oh, about fire hydrants and just, just trying to make the spaces more efficient. Yeah, I, so the hydrant moving that we've talked about doing is part of the Arlington Safe Center travel mm -hmm. program. Uh, I think we can get done pretty quickly. Uh, most of them aren't, you know, we don't have to lay new pipe down, which would be more cost. <coughs> So uh, within the existing DPW budget, maybe with some additional appropriation over the next year or so, we can get a lot of help. Bob? Yes. Um, this is kind of really the process, but uh, it looks like uh, right around the 2019 uh, budget situation, uh, we might run into some high capital expenditures with high school. Yeah. So uh, what do you have coming to that? You know, so that, that's one of the major conversations that the Finance Committee, the Board of Selectmen, uh, and uh, the Long Range Planning Committee, and the Capital Planning Committee have been having. How do we time considering a big capital project at the high school and a potential operating overhead? Uh, and the, the thought process is you can't have them in the same year. You don't want them to be necessarily one year after another. So that's one of the main reasons that the School Committee and the Board of Selectmen submitted a statement of interest to the MSBA for the high school this year, so that if we did get in the shoot this year, we would be well ahead of 2019. There's no guarantee we get in this year. There's no guarantee we get in for the high school in the next few years. Uh, but the, the plan would be to try to have them you know, two or three years apart uh, so that there isn't so much an impact on the taxpayer if both will be uh, to be successful. Arlington maybe not now, but has had the most active housing market in Massachusetts recently. And do you see that impact? 
impacting the budget in terms of property taxes because of buildings um, and condos? What's the future? I'm just wondering what, the, what your single trend has, and does that increase the property taxes? So then, yeah, there isn't a, uh, it's, it's small, but there is an incremental boost in property taxes when you split them up to family into condos. There's a little bit of a value gain. Uh, so, so that is helpful. And I let Bob or some other real estate folks maybe speak better than I could, but there does seem to be a continuing trend of conversions of multifamily condos in town. Uh, but that seems to also be balanced up against a pretty low inventory in town, uh, which is creating such a tight market. I don't know yeah, I mean, I think your answer is it's incremental. You're already having base tax generated by that piece of real estate. So although it increases, the bulk of the money is already there. Yeah. Uh, I think the bigger changes are things like Arlington 360 and the Brigham's development yeah. and stuff like that. I think I heard that the 360 is generating almost a million dollars a year. Yeah, it's probably, if you take right here, the assisted living center and uh, the rental units, kind of money. So that's, that's the type of growth. So you won't be surprised by my question, but would the parking um, affect the location of the farmer's market? Uh, it may. It, it, we, the, there's still some discussions to be had about either making sure that we're not creating problems with the parking regulations by keeping the farmer's market there, or talking to maybe, maybe some private lot owners who aren't using it during that time period for the farmer's market. So with the, I'm aware of it. The planning department has been working on it, is aware of it. The Board of Selectmen is certainly aware of it. And, you know, we don't want to create too many special treatment situations. We also don't we want to make sure we maintain the farmer's market. So we, we will figure it out, uh, but there may be it. This may be more of a question for Ted, but um, I'm just starting to realize, I have a little store on Warren Street, and I've got two empty storefronts on both sides of me, which been the case for over a year that I've been there and I don't know how long before that and then dangling across the street and it used to be a really vibrant commercial area with a grocery store and a fish market and so it's just dead um, so that's bad for me but I'm just dawning on me like what's the incentive in terms of the town to try to promote economic development when you don't get the sales tax benefit but we don't we just get property tax so just trying to figure out like where that fits in, and it's really up to the property owner, as far as I can tell, to make this area vibrant again. So yeah, it, it, it is. That's a very, it's a very good question. Um, I mean, I think our major incentive is, and it's probably incremental, like the condo question. Uh, but if uh, a commercial storefront is inhabited, you, you know, and there's there's commercial activity there there's eventually going to be a higher property valuation where, whereby we collect higher taxes from that property. So if you look at that across town, there is a benefit to us of having non, you know, of not having vacant storefronts, of having a vibrant business area wherever. Does the property owner have any incentive not to rent? Um, the tax write-offs and lower, I mean, I don't know, they would have to balance their well, I guess I would, maybe I would answer it saying that there's no disincentive to not rent, other than not collecting rent. Yeah. But we don't have a tax structure that can analyze that for not renting. So that's a good question. It's something we should do. I think we're limited based on statute that we can do, but it's, it's a good question. Thank you. Well, thank you, Adam, and uh, thank you all for inviting me to speak today. My name is Ted Fields. I'm the town's new economic development director. I've been here for a bit under a year, and uh, my job is uh, as forming priorities, but they're really meant to uh, protect the town's fiscal stability and tax base, and especially its commercial tax base. Um, and those four uh, priorities are to enhance and protect the town's commercial properties, as I just said, expand uh, the town's economy into appropriate <coughs> new economic sectors, uh, responding to national and international and regional uh, trends and economics and businesses and uh, the labor markets, 
uh, advise local policymakers on uh, appropriate economic development uh, strategies and policies uh, to benefit the town. And then finally, to uh, plan the uh, improvement of the town's commercial centers and business districts to ensure that they're uh, as vibrant and as uh, accessible and as interesting places to work, shop, uh, visit, and to uh, enjoy oneself and to serve really the needs of the residents as much as possible. And I aim to, to do this really with a, a four-pronged strategy that we are uh, developing as we uh, uh, work through the town's uh, master plan process that Adam alluded to earlier. Uh, and that's really focused on um, attracting new types of businesses to occupy vacant storefronts and vacant commercial properties, uh, or even underutilized commercial properties that might have um, a business that's waning uh, in activity, uh, and just to uh, bring in different types or new types of businesses that can increase the valuation, increase the, uh, the income both for the town to enhance tax revenue and also for the property owner and the business owners. Uh, we're also trying to promote new activities in the town's uh, three business districts and smaller commercial areas. Uh, uh, Selectman Curro just proposed a, a town meeting uh, article uh, for street performances. Uh, we're also um, investigating uh, spaces for public art. Uh, we're also um, really studying the importance of the town's uh, cultural facilities and cultural businesses uh, to see their influence on bringing people into town and not just serving local residents but people from inside 128, 495 and even from uh, outside of the state. Uh, they bring a tremendous amount of people into town, people who shop people who patronize restaurants, uh, and that's uh, a good effect for the town. Uh, we're also continually uh, looking at ways to improve the uh, physical condition of the uh, business districts, uh, and making them more pleasant places to be in, as I said, both to work, to visit, to shop, uh, and to enjoy yourself in. Um, and then finally, uh, we're trying to improve the accessibility of uh, the commercial districts, making them easier to get into and also to navigate within. Uh, and that includes not just um, uh, making uh, access to them uh, better through transit and uh, automobile or bike or, or walking, but also um, easier to navigate with signage, better signage, uh, and also uh, raising their uh, awareness through uh, the town's new website uh, through an economic development uh, portion of the website that will help uh, raise the profile of the commercial districts and also helping the merchants associations within town with their own websites to give them a greater profile. And uh, over the past year we've uh, embarked on uh, fulfilling this strategy with a number of different projects um, including uh, a conference we had in October called Incubation which really uh, addressed new types of businesses that are popping up uh, throughout the United States and especially in Boston and Cambridge. Uh, co-working spaces, work sharing spaces, uh, they're uh, a, a major new development in how uh, tech startups are using space uh, collaboratively uh, to achieve higher efficiencies and higher throughput with uh, less amount of space. Um, we're planning a follow-up conference in June uh, that will um, explore the uh, possibilities uh, of that sector a little bit more. And uh, we're also uh, starting to talk to property owners about ways that they can um, rent on a short-term basis vacant properties they may have uh, to get generate some income while they're looking for a long-term tenant. Uh, it might not be a perfect solution for every uh, commercial property owner, but it's uh, we, we want to offer that to uh, those who might be able to take advantage of that uh, service. Um, we've also put new public parking signs out here in Arlington Center, a number of places to make it easier for visitors uh, and residents to find the public parking lots uh, around here. Uh, we're developing um, better uh, systems 
in place to track commercial properties that are vacant and also to uh, catalog the, uh, the characteristics of those that uh, are vacant and occupied in town. So we have a better idea of the types of spaces we have in town. Uh, we've started, uh, we've reinvigorated a storefront enhancement program. Right now I'm working with the owners of two commercial storefronts to renovate uh, their facades. They'll uh, make a big difference. Uh, one's in Arlington Heights, one's in East Arlington. And I'm looking for a third property in our hope. <laughs> well, I can also work with business owners who uh, can cooperate with property owners. So I'll talk to you afterwards and we can look at your situation. But that'll, we think that will make a big difference in our commercial districts, uh, just sprucing up the, uh, the aesthetics uh, and make it better for everybody. Uh, we're, I'm helping um, the merchants associations in all three business centers. Uh, to uh, organize themselves and to hold events, um, hold, uh, uh, help each other out uh, where necessary, and that's been going very well. Capital Square is already uh, has a very strong association. Uh, we're getting the uh, Arlington Center, the Heights Merchants, organized, and they've made great strides, and, and that's really progressing well. And then um, a larger, no oh, I shouldn't forget to mention. Uh, with the chamber, we hosted, we helped uh, to organize the first light celebration in December. That was a great success. Thanks to Jen and the chamber, they did a great job. And also, uh, we helped a bit with the Halloween celebration. And again, hosted by the chamber, another great job. And that really brought a lot of foot traffic back into the, the commercial districts. Uh, that is really something we're looking to enhance and to continue. Um, and then finally, on a, on a larger scale, uh, we, um, with the planning department and on the town departments, uh, we'll soon be starting the Mass Avenue uh, reconstruction in East Arlington in the near future, in cooperation with the state. Uh, we'll also, in the near future, be starting the Arlington Center Safe Travel Project that will make it easier for uh, users of the rail trail, the Midland Rail Trail, to navigate across Mass Ave and then continue on into the heights. And then um, in this past summer, uh, we worked with uh, the DPW department to repave Mass Ave in Arlington Heights. That was a big group. So those are just some of the uh, some of the brief things that uh, have been that my department has been working on. And we're also very happy to welcome several new businesses to town over the past year. Uh, Bagelville just opened in the Heights. We have Himalayan Crafts, Yummies. Uh, and um, uh, well, the, the, the Yummies and uh, Himalayan Cafe, sorry, are in the center. And then Retro Burger, Froze Land, and Something Sweet Without Wheat uh, in the east and kind of between the center mm -hmm. and the heights. So we're very happy that those uh, businesses have decided to locate here in Arlington. We welcome them to town. I've talked with every one of them and I'm trying to reach out to them and help them where I can build a relationship with them. And um, finally, uh, on a wider scale, the planning department is uh, undertaking a master plan process to uh, develop goals for the town's land use policies for the next 20, 30 years. And that does include an economic development section. Uh, right now, our consultants just finished presenting an economic development working paper that uh, broached a number of questions that we're looking at as part of the master plan process. You can find uh, the text of that paper online on the town's website, as well as a brief survey uh, asking uh, residents and business owners and property owners um, several interesting questions that uh, we really want to um, get input from uh, residents about and business owners about. Uh, for example, uh, should zoning and land use regulations be used to relieve parking shortages in commercial districts? Um, what measures should the town invoke to promote mixed-use development along Massachusetts Avenue that a number of residents and property owners have called for in our public planning sessions we've had over the past year? Uh, it also asks questions about several uh, potential uh, areas for future development along Route 2 in Arlington Heights in Arlington Center and in East Arlington. Um, and then finally, uh, what can the town do to encourage people to, or support people working from home? We have a very high uh, number of 
our workforce that works from home, professional occupations and creative occupations. It's a very important part of the town's economy. And um, a number of, we've received a lot of input that says that we should support this type of uh, endeavors. And then finally, um, should the town adopt parking and other policies to support anchor uses that benefits uh, the commercial districts as a whole? So that's some of the issues we're looking at in the master plan process for the next 20, 30 years. We'd love to have your input on those uh, questions. And um, finally, uh, thank you for having me today. I uh, uh, and will enjoy working with you in the future uh, to improve the town and to keep the tax base vital and uh, strong. And uh, again, thank you very much. Questions? Yes. Um, the question that I have is, um, well, first of all, I just wanted to thank you for being here. Well, thank you. This, is, this is really great information for the chamber. But secondly, um, Jen has really worked very hard to work with all the different merchants associations in town. And what we've seen as, um, as the, chamber, the chamber board and Jen has seen is that um, while the Capitol Square is very active and strong, um, it's, it's almost like we're competing and you know, people are spinning their wheels trying to get things going and they don't have the time or the resources. Right. And we found that you know, with the trick-or-treating, with the first lights, it was very helpful to have the chamber's involvement. Yes. And that really made things happen. Yes. So you know, I just think it's so important for us to have these strong ties to the Merchants Association so that yes. they have that um, administrative help that they don't, they don't have. Uh, printing resources and you know ideas and people sure. that are willing to work and support them and get things to happen within the community. I agree, and, and Jen is at a number of different merchants associations meetings with me, and it, we help to kind of create a common bond between all three groups right. and to you know cross pollinate ideas between the groups and uh, even to help keep them on track a little bit with what others are doing, so they don't duplicate efforts. Uh, with each other uh, and whatnot, and to, so they can really focus on their own areas uh, and uh, just do the best that they can. With what they have. And with that, I think you know having that master calendar on the town website when major things are going on within the community. That I think it's important for the business communities to work closely with the town, um, the merchants association, as well as the chamber, so that we're not looking against each other. Um, with what, what we're trying to offer for town-wide events or for business community events. I agree, and I believe the town's new website will <coughs> augment that yeah, yeah. calendar. Yeah, very quickly, one of the features of the new website is going to be uh, right on the home page, uh, town meeting, community meeting, calendars that you can toggle back and forth very easily, and that acts as just one main calendar that has all meetings available. So there should be some improvements uh, for the new website. Yes? This is more of a comment, but Thank you for changing out the street lights so that they now look more uniform. The lollipop ones that are here in the center are now being replaced with ones that are similar to the heights. And there's some new ones that were put in the heights in, in uh, the, the, the park out extension area. And that. Um, and I don't know if that style of lights going to continue into East Arlington, but it's showing that we're having continuity with the town. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, and I know that DPW is taking great lengths to uh, stockpile uh, those more historical type of lights, and they, as much as they can, they are trying to replace them in an orderly fashion and try to unif uniformly apply them throughout the town. Yes? Uh, Jen, you know, I guess it's a two-part question about uh, attracting businesses to Arlington and also to help the businesses that come to town to be established and to be able to open on a timely basis. Um, maybe an example is the Common Ground Restaurant in Broadway Plaza. Now I understand when restaurants are opening, there's a lot of roadblocks and things internally. But and not being part of the process, I don't know the one years of the town regulations and inspections and things like that can Slow, slow down a, a restaurant or business from opening. Can you speak to that at all about what kind of things the town sure. is going to try to ease 
those kind of things to make it easier for businesses to move in and then once they move in to open? Well, one of my roles is to serve as a troubleshooter for businesses, both in town and seeking to come into town, mm -hmm. uh, to help them navigate the various town processes for uh, developing a business in town. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm trying to circumvent any uh, regulations or processes, but I can certainly help them find the right person to talk to uh, or find the right process to undertake. Uh, and as part of the new town's website, I've developed a business guide that will uh, provide a, a succinct task list for different types of businesses, for what they need in terms of permitting, who they should talk to in terms of zoning information, or other types of information. Uh, similar to what Devon has done, it's, it's proven to be very successful. Uh, we've augmented that type of initiative, and it will be both online and available in paper format. <coughs> So uh, somebody coming into town or seeking to expand their business will know exactly what to do and who to talk to. Uh, and that will avoid a lot of hassles that develop kind of doing things piecemeal. Yes? Uh, I haven't actually seen the parking study, but um, is there anything specific in there that I, I didn't hear the last part of that question. Is, is there anything specific in the, um, this new parking study mm -hmm. that looks like it will be a woman's recommended development? Well, there are a number of initiatives that will increase parking efficiency and that will uh, help uh, the town achieve an objective of one uh, free space per block and that will help attract, make the town more attractive for shoppers especially Arlington, in the Arlington Center, more attractive to shoppers. And uh, it's also looking at longer term parking um, alternatives uh, that will uh, help the town um, <coughs> in Arlington, Heights, Arlington Center uh, develop better into the future. Do you mind if I say a word? One, I'm sorry, I don't want to jump your train. I'm joking about from the board select. Um, <coughs> We haven't received the formal recommendations of the parking study yet, and I know there, a lot of analysis has to be done. There is a concept that was floated out by Nelson Nygaard, the parking um, <clears throat> consultants, uh, around parking benefit districts. I know it hasn't been analyzed fully in, in the Arlington context, but I'm, I'm very interested in that. That has been used as an as a economic development tool in other areas, whereby a portion of the, the parking revenue that, that comes in, so we're putting meters in, a portion of that gets plowed back into that commercial district towards improvements, towards wayfinding, towards infrastructure upgrade. Again, we haven't received, as a board, we'll have to pass it off on, on any of the, um, the, the final recommendations. It's something I'm very interested in. I, I know that um, the staff is going to analyze that and how that will fit into the overall plan, but that's a very specific economic development uh, tool. I know that Ted and, and a number of uh, myself and a number of other uh, staff members attended a parking conference last week and they, they threw out a number of case studies where there's work. One specific was Pasadena, California. Old Pasadena apparently was a very run down uh, area. They instituted um, a parking approach similar to what we're discussing along with the parking benefit district and they yielded about $80,000 per block which they were able to then put into infrastructure improvements, trees, sidewalks and such. And apparently, I haven't been there, but apparently it's now a, a big uh, tourism magnet now in that part of California. So those are some of the things we've been discussing around, around that, which will be a policy decision that, that we'll have to help. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump. No, 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 no. <coughs> if you don't mind, I should have uh, mentioned but at the outset, you know, one of the things in Arlington we're extremely fortunate to have it's a very progressive, forward-thinking, and business-friendly board, and I know Joe has really taken, taken the lead on that. Uh, I've been here this morning, and I've been very active in some of the, uh, the individual business groups. So I, I think we're, uh, you know, everybody here this morning should know that, uh, you know, Ted and I working internally are really dedicated to building a better relationship between the town and businesses, but the town's elected leadership, at least from where I see, very much dedicated to those. So I, everything Joe said is right on in terms of our, our goals and the Ted's for the parking study. It's really, it's about 
creating a situation where we protect the residents who are outside or just bordering uh, the business district, but creating uh, an environment where we want to say we're open for business. You come here, park, shop, eat, and be good. Yeah, just one comment on that. Um, if you're here today, it's always because you have an interest in uh, the business. Um, I've been realty here 45 years. We've never had this sort of situation before. This is all new. If, if you're new in business and you think this has been going on for 20 years, this is new. Uh, I've never seen a time where the town and the chamber and the business community have started to lock hands and say, we should all work together. And it goes back to about five or six years ago, the town spent a lot of money on the Larry Kauf stuff. This was a company that was hired to analyze major properties in Arlington. It could, if zoning was looked at differently, develop opportunities for new growth. Uh, the town has recently just done a study of the businesses between the Capitol Theater and Regent Theater, and how we as a business community can say, who's coming here, where are they coming from, uh, what revenue they bring to the town. Uh, the town is just now, I think, embarking on a study on Business, correct. All the landscapers, the masons, the painters, the contractors. Um, there's a lot of hidden opportunity here that I think if we didn't have the town's input and involvement, would have remained undiscovered. So when it was asked about, uh, well, you asked about how does this all work for economic development, I just think this is an amazing time for the business community to work closely with the town, and I'm just appreciative that we have this great relationship. Thank you. I just have a question. Can you explain the overnight parking ban? <laughs> 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 I just, I, I don't park, Tess. I don't get that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's a loaded one. Well, the answer is we have one. You can get back to yeah. that. Yeah, you know, historically, the, the town has decided that uh, getting cars off the street, I think, you know, maintain that town feel as opposed to a city feel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been told to me that from a public safety point of view, mm -hmm. it maintains straight sight lines down the street so people can feel safe uh, coming home that there isn't somebody or something hiding, you know, or around or behind a car. Uh, you know, people running out from between cars later at night when there's, uh, you know, less, uh, less visibility. And, you know, there has been a lot of talk about why, why do we still have this? And there was a ballot question uh, was that last, last year? year, last year, and it, it was uh, overturning or removing the ban was defeat. Uh, so it seems like there's still a lot of folks in town by a pretty wide margin. Big margin, big margin. Well, so, of the, as somebody that came in, I've, as I mentioned, I've only been here five years, but some of some of the things on the ballot are I find a little confusing. Yeah. Um, the way they're explained, so I don't know. It's you know. Maybe maybe there's um, a, a more illust illustrative way to explain certain things on the ballot yeah. that are a little bit clearer because I think sometimes things get combined as well. So people they may want one part of it, but they don't want the other part of it. Yeah. Um, but that you know, especially with businesses coming in that are open until <coughs> twelve or one. Not that we want to be a bar community, but that then becomes a public safety issue. Somebody is now potentially going to drive versus, you know, leaving their car overnight, which, yeah. and maybe they, maybe they shouldn't, yeah. so. Well, that's a fair point. We have found some recent ban-based questions on a ballot uh, that the legality of asking the question the right way mm -hmm. in regards to a ban creates mm -hmm. like a double negative situation, mm -hmm. so you're right, it creates a bit of a yeah. challenge there. You know, the other thing with the overnight parking ban, someone raised to me that I hadn't thought of until you mentioned was, by allowing for more overnight parking, sort of promotes car ownership mm -hmm. and car use, which isn't necessarily an overall yeah. goal of the town from sort of a sustainability or environmental mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. But that, excise tax? Excise tax is, but, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's a fair. So, but there, there is a balance of what, what yeah. it is we're exactly you know, we're trying. Yeah. Well, historically, street sweeping took place overnight. Mm -hmm. And when the car's off the street, you can then clean the streets. Yeah. And that, that was one of the main things back your show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and people can also go online on the town website. If you have an overnight guest and you don't have any room, yes, you can yes. apply yeah. and yeah. notify yeah. notify the police station that you have. You put down the license plate number and uh, the state mm -hmm. of the car, and you can do that 
online. Mm -hmm. Doing up, up to five times a year. Right. Yeah. Eight. Eight days. Yeah. I have a um, comment. No, sorry to be so verbal, but this is our opportunity, right? Um, I just heard about a new app yesterday that's going to be available on phones, smartphones, for. Um, it's uh, the whole purpose of the phone app, and I don't have the information, unfortunately, but ATAD, I think, would be really interested in this. Um, it's about getting people out and moving and going and seeing historic sites. Mm -hmm. And so I think the town would behoove the town to make sure that we're involved in that, whatever information is in that phone app, I can do some research and get that information. Bob, is that your committee that you're on? Yeah, but I think, you know, we, we would be smart to make sure that Arlington is that owner who's driving the information into that phone app. But people I think Bob is a, a technology guy. <laughs> <laughs> Does he know that? Yeah. You know, he knows that. Yeah. He knows that. I read about that. So yeah. it geolocates yeah, you and where just, you are. Yeah, it just came out yesterday, story. the information on it. Yeah, we can I've actually talked to an app developer in Lexington who's developing an app in Lexington around that very uh, concept. And we're talking about expanding it to cover the whole Battle Road uh, area. created by the Board of Selectmen a number of uh, years ago. Um, we've had a number of uh, initiatives, but what, what uh, Leland's asking about is a tourism information booth. Uh, this was um, funded by town meeting uh, two, two years ago. It's planned for over by the Uncle Sam Plaza. Um, it's been ordered. I think best to understand is it's coming in the next couple of weeks is what we understand, but we're trying to tie it in also with the uh, the uh, safety improvements in, in the center. So I, I was actually just, just out there last week with um, Clarissa Rowe from the committee and, we, and uh, Ted Peluso and we were meeting with the, um, the property owner, mm -hmm. Mr. Megadici, there to, to try to work through some of the siting uh, issues. But it will be over there by the Uncle Sam Plaza. So hopefully picking up some of what would be through traffic right through Arlington on, on the bikeway, especially mm -hmm. during good weather, will have the ability to provide information about local businesses, local events, and such. And I, I should just make a pitch. Um, you know, we have funding for the center. We're staffing it with volunteers. We're going to need a lot of volunteers there. So um, if any of you or your staffs would be interested at when, once that's opened in, in coming and, um, you know, helping with shifts or, or whatnot to, to put a great face on, on our Looking forward to that. Um, I think it's currently it's planned to be this weekend during the during the warmer hours. I think I don't think it'll be open in the winter when it's not as much traffic on the, the bikeway, at least at, at the outset, um, because we, we weren't able to fund the operating costs. So this is another reason why I'm interested in things like parking benefit districts that maybe we could think about right, things like that if they were legally um, allowed. Um, you should also look around the town. Uh, one other initiative of ATED was some better historic signage for some of our uh, tourist um, sites that's more uniform and easier to read. That all went up yesterday. So I know it's kind of dreary out, but uh, look around in the center by um, the uh, Dallin Museum and um, I think what are the Foot of the Rocks. Foot of the Rocks, Old Berry Grounds, Schwamm Mill, um, um, Jason Russell House. So look for that and uh, that's something we'll be talking about in the future is possibly if, that, if people like that you know, expanding that as well as, as a way to try to attract and keep people here as, as kind of a destination. On, on that geolocate application, <coughs> if anybody needs to connect with them, I know the owners very well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, really? So we'll be happy to connect with them. Yeah. 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 Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sunday night the 27th, the town of Arlington is hosting a big celebration of the 
30th anniversary of our sister cities event with the city in Japan called and now we have Kino. Exactly. Very good. Uh, it's really going to be a great event. If you attended the town hall 100 last year, it's a similar thing. Lots of entertainment, some uh, It's at 6 o'clock on the 27th. Tickets are $50. It's a full sit down dinner catered by Beaujolais Caterers. Um, it's really going to be a very, very nice event. We're expecting to get at least 250 people to attend. We have a Japanese delegation of 85 people coming, which would be great. I think tickets are available in the Southern Tuckers. Yes. And they're $50 each. So if you'd like to come to that, make your arrangements there. If you'd like to sponsor it, we still have open to oh. sponsors with us. And you can hear the manager sing. That's <laughs> price. <laughs> Again? Japanese. <laughs> Sorry. That's <all> right. <laughs> the last time. Farewell to all.